Why does Reunion Island choose to remain a French territory? Have you heard of Reunion Island? Reunion is a tiny island off the East African coast that is part of France's overseas territories. Its neighbors, Madagascar to the west and Mauritius to the northeast, are both independent nations. So why has this African island not gained its independence? And has it ever pushed for independence in the first place? Before we dive into this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. To understand why Reunion has not sought independence, we have to understand its history. We have to go back to the very beginning. Arab traders may have spotted the island while sailing from Madagascar to Malaysia, but did not set foot in it because of its hostile volcanic activity. Diego Fernandes Pereira, a Portuguese sailor passed by the island in 1507 and named it Santa Apollonia, but the first recorded visitors to set foot on the island were British sailors. They described it as a paradise of parrots and turtles. The animals were described as being unafraid of humans, probably because this was their first time encountering them. The island's fishing grounds were so abundant that its birds were so obese from their catch, they could not fly and could barely walk. After this, both the Dutch and French tried unsuccessfully to settle on the island. The French later named it Bourbon Island after France's royal family's name. The settlements never took root because settlers preferred Madagascar. Finally, in 1664, the French king gave ownership of the island to the French East India Company. About 600 settlers including freed slaves forced into exile moved to Bourbon Island. They grew tobacco, pistachios, peanuts, and cotton and reared cows and goats. Its population remained tiny until 1716. In 1716, coffee was introduced to the island by the company. To encourage new settlers who would increase the profitable coffee yield, the French East India Company offered free land to French citizens willing to settle on the island. Slaves from India and Africa, especially Madagascar, were also brought to the island to cultivate the crop. To add to this melting pot were the sailors from other parts of the world who settled on the island. This melting pot of races is still seen on the island today. Later the French East Indian Company collapsed and the island fell directly under the French government once more. Coffee was replaced by sugarcane as the main cash crop. Because cane is labor-intensive more slaves were brought to Bourbon Island. This also led to smaller settlers losing their land to richer families who needed large tracts of land to grow it. This increased the gap between the rich and the poor on the island and its repercussions are still felt to this day. In 1792, the French monarchy fell as Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette were imprisoned and later beheaded. The island was renamed Reunion Island after the Union of the Revolutionaries and the National Guard in Paris. The island's name changed again to Bonaparte Island during Napoleon's reign in France. More change was to come to the tiny island when the British annexed it from France in 1810, and it reverted to Reunion Island. For years later, after fierce fighting the French got the island back, but it remained Reunion. France had not regained possession of her other African islands of Mauritius and Seychelles from the British, and so all her efforts for colonial wealth in the Indian Ocean settled on the island. More slaves were imported, forests were cut to create room for farmland and the economy boomed. Of course, with this boom came rampant inequality, most egregious of all was that 60% of the island population were slaves. In the early 1840s, a 12-year-old slave boy would change the fate of the island forever. He had discovered how to pollinate vanilla on the island, and he was freed as a reward. Over time vanilla became a major export of the island. This changed in 1848 with the abolition of slavery. 100,000 people now needed paying jobs, and only a few people could provide them. This gave the rich farmers an unfair advantage and instead of paying the free people a fair wage, they opted to import dirt cheap workers from China, mainland Africa, Madagascar, and India. 
This added to the diversity of the island, and further fueled the Creole culture that was emerging. The Creoles on the island today consider themselves a mixture of all the different races that have settled on the island. They have a unique culture that borrows from all the different cultures that have touched the island. Today, the Reunion's people are French citizens and the island elects representatives to the French Parliament in Paris. This is because, in 1946, it was made an official territory of France. This allows the tiny island to tap into France's resources that it might otherwise not have access to. It also makes emigration to France easier, and a significant portion of the island has done so. And herein lays the first reason why Reunion remains under France. As a small island of 870,000 people that relies mainly on agriculture as its main export, it benefits from being a French territory. It is not mineral rich and its beaches have not attracted tourists the way other islands like Seychelles have. Staying under the governance of France seems to be its best bet. To its credit, France has invested in infrastructure on the island. In 2003 construction on the routes to Tamarin started. The project cost about 700 million euros and is the largest infrastructure project on the island to date. France's willingness to invest in the island is probably a large part of why there has been no independence movement. Also being part of France offers reunion markets for its sugar since it is part of the EU through France. Reunion and Mayotte are the only outermost regions of the EU in the Southern Hemisphere. Recently, the European Commission, through a press release, outline new strategies to improve the standard of living of the people in the outermost regions. This is a resource that many small island nations would envy. The EU also provides opportunities for the movement of labor. Moreover, a fourth of the island's population is under 15, and these young people need employment opportunities that France and by extension, the EU can offer. Moreover, being an overseas French territory gives reunion stability in its administration and government. Apart from a few protests in the 1990s and early 2000s, there has been no unrest on the island. This cannot be said for many young democracies, especially the African continent that have seen coups and other growing pains in the quest to make stable governments. Another reason can be seen in its history. The island was uninhabited before the 16th century. This means that it lacks a native population for whom independence would hold special significance. This is the situation witnessed in New Caledonia. The French territory of New Caledonia held its last of three referendums on independence in 2021. Each time the native Karnak population voted overwhelmingly for independence, while descendants of French settlers voted to remain under France. Still, the Karnak went to court to nullify their elections and their application was rejected. In this situation, the tribe feels that France does not recognize its indigenous identity. Sadly, each referendum lost because the Karnak is a minority. In Reunion, there is no native population. Furthermore, unlike the British, the French used assimilation. As a result the Creoles on the island, who form the majority of the population, consider themselves French. The lack of one major ethnic identity means that its people did not identify with any of the independence movements, in Africa or India. In contrast, neighboring Mauritius has two-thirds of the population of Indo-Pakistani and was inspired by the independence movement in India. They did not identify as French or British and so they sought to assert their identity through independence. The smaller Creole population in Mauritius tried to revert to a French territory but did not succeed. The problems of wealth inequality still plague reunion to this day. These are echoes of slavery and colonialism that left wealth in the hands of a few rich sugarcane farmers who own large tracts of land. Riots often broke out in the 1990s and early 2000s due to unfair policies. Most recently in 2012, riots broke out because of the high cost of living and the high price of petrol. Research also shows that Caucasians are often wealthier than their African counterparts and are also more likely to get administrative jobs. Moreover, almost 50% of the population lives below the poverty line. 
This is exacerbated by the fact that minimum wage workers on the island make 10% less than those in mainland France. Brain drain also affects the island with most skilled workers emigrating to Madagascar and France. Hopefully, things will get better for reunion. Well, we've come to the end of our video. I hope that answers your questions about why this island has not had an independence movement. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. See you soon in our new video.